Distinguished guests, good evening. This evening's service shall be officiated by clergy from the House on the Rock, the Guide and Light Assembly, and Kingdom Life Apostolic Ministries. This is truly indicative of the union of the body of Christ. Let us now join with the integrated mass choir comprising of Voice of His Light from Guide and Light Assembly, Kingdom Lifeline Apostolic Ministries Choir, and the Lagos Metropolitan and Rock Cathedral Gospel Choirs. This is representative of Mama's desire that the body of Christ be united at all times. Let us all sing the processional hymn, O God Beyond All Praising.
Please give a smile. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, we meet in the solemn moment to worship God. Yet with immense gratitude to the Lord for the life of our mother, grandmother, great grandmother, and aunt. Truly a quintessential matriarch an iconic women's activist, a national treasure, and most importantly, an ambassador of all that is good and godly. Mrs. Hilda Victoria John Adifarasi Nipetgrave to commend her to God's loving and faithful care and to pray for all who feel the pain of her, of her departure. I feel it too. To receive hope in our time of loss. To remember her kindness, selfless service, and ensure confidence to commit her to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. With reverence, we recall her long and impactful life of service, dedication to humanity and this great nation. With gratitude, we praise God for her consistent example of christian faith and devotion with affection we recall her love for her family commitment to the various professional and humanitarian courses she held dear in the presence of death christ offers us a sure ground for hope and confidence and even for joy because he shared our human life and death, was raised again triumphant, and lives forevermore. Hallelujah. In him, his people find eternal life. Let us then hear the words of his holy scripture, that from them we may draw comfort and strength. Let's put our hands together for the God who gave us mama, and who helped her to live a beautiful life you can do better than that if you love her truly jump those two hands together and just worship god for her life amen a word of prayer before we sit down please ladies and gentlemen please welcome apostle Yemi Adefarsin, Senior Pastor, Kingdom Lifeline Apostolic Ministries. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for Hilda Victoria Joanne Adifarasi and the life that she lived. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory because you are omnipotent, you are omnipresent, and you are omniscient. We pray open the gates of this assembly and we welcome you, King of Glory, to come and take preeminence even here. We welcome the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We sanctify this assembly by the speakings of the blood of Jesus Christ. We consecrate it unto you for where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. So we welcome you from within and from without. We thank you, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will be exalted. Lord Jesus, that you will be glorified. Holy Spirit, we give you preeminence even right now as we invoke the speakings of the blood of Jesus Christ to cover us, to bring about the fullness of your redemption, redemptive manifestations here in the midst and the abundant life that you had given to us. Thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was Pastor Yemi Adifarasi, fourth child of Bama Adifarasi and second son. 
please welcome the mass integrated choir oh clap your hands oh you people and celebrate our king come on lift him up i know that we honor a queen today just wave your hands like this if you can oh You are worthy, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. Oh, my Lord. Stand amazed in your presence. Hey, Jesus. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. Nobody like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. Yes, you do mighty things. You do glorious. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Lift your voice and sing. There is nothing you cannot do. He's a line of a trap of Judah. I stand amazed. There is joy.
awesome is your name. Somebody celebrate our God, for he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Our God remains faithful. Come and clap your hands in this room and give the Lord your loudest shout of praise. It's a worthy.
to what the Lord has done. He has destroyed the works of sin. Oh, lift your voice and say, That's who I will sing. Sing of you as the Lord has done. How you as to what the Lord He has destroyed. He has given us the victory. That's who I will sing. Lift up your hands in thanksgiving to the King of Kings as we celebrate the beautiful life of Mama. Hallelujah. And the legacy she left behind. Lord, we bless you and we raise a sound of thanksgiving. We worship you. Let's do it together.
the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, for your mercy is immense. To Jesus, the blameless, sinless, spotless, holy, sweet Lamb of God, you are our high priest who perfectly fits our need. Your unblemished sacrifice has eternally made us fit for your glory. You are not a resurrection or a life. You are the resurrection and the life. You are the embodiment of resurrection and life. For death could not hold you down. The grave could not contain you. The stone could not stop you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. For you are bigger than sin. You are bigger than the grave. You are bigger than the stone. You are bigger than death. We celebrate you, Jesus. For your wounds became our healing. Your curse became our blessing. Your rejection became our acceptance. Your death became our life. 
accept our praise and worship Jesus and let the spirit of consolation and comfort fill this atmosphere and let your name alone be glorified in Jesus most magnificent name we have worship put your hands together for the Lord kindly remain standing for our first king titled how great thou art how great thou art glorifies God and shows humanity's awe at creation. It is a God-honoring song. It was written by Carl Gutzel Bogberg, a Swedish member of parliament, and written in 1885 and translated by E. Gutzel Johnson. The hymn is on page six of your program and the lyrics will also be on the multimedia screens. Kindly sing along with joy and God bless you. How great thou art.
are comprising of the chorus of his life from GLA, the Kingdom Lifeline Apostolic Ministry Choir, and the Lagos Metropolitan and Rock Cathedral Gospel Choirs. To help us take the first Bible reading for this evening, I would like to call on a granddaughter of Mama, Miss Ademide Adefarasi. The first Bible reading is taken from John chapter 11, verses 21 through 26. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, on, said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? God bless the reading of his word. Please turn your attention to the multimedia screens as we bring you a play out from Rock Media. She doesn't joke, joke with God, you know. First, uh, first uh, thing in life is God. And then she believes so much in God, and that's why all the children have uh, become pastors. And that's a wish. That's what she's, and I'm sure she's fulfilled, and she's happy. She would always be on time to church. She would come from Ikeja to Ikoi to church. And for me, that um, indicated and showed to me that she was very devoted to God. I recollect an incident when um, my granddaughter was, um, you know, uh, she was born in LA and she had jaundice. I was with them and I was so worried and I thought, ah, who am I going to get in touch with that would stand in the gap with me? So um, I called Auntie and I told Auntie, this is the issue, this girl has jaundice. And Auntie and Bola, they prayed through, you know, until this girl was well. So she was somebody that, um, you know, one could always, you know, uh, count on. This woman really fought the good fight. And it can only be faith that would have allowed anybody to keep on fighting and going and going and going. And the interesting thing about it is that in her lifetime, she witnessed the rewards of this faith to God. And that's what I will always remember her for. When we were in St. Gregory's College, Wally used to tell us that um, Justice Adefarasi, his father, and Mrs. Hilda Adefarasi, they used to attend a service, a, a Christian service, in Dodan Barracks with the then head of state. I think it was even, probably even earlier because that was, it was before General Yakubu Gawan even be, got married. I think it was before he got, so that must have been 66-ish. And I was so impressed that even at that time she took her religion very seriously. And so it's no surprise whatsoever to see that her three sons <laughs> have uh, taken it to, to the church. Mrs. Uh, uh, Hilda Deferasin, a virtuous woman, dedicated she was a devoted christian and that was how we first met mama had a, a friendship bible society a group of women we used to meet at mama's home i think on tuesdays and mama would give us sit around her dining table mama will always have sandwiches coffee tea for us and we'll study the bible for three years myself and bola had a did night vigil once a week in Mama's home, because I were, you know, every Wednesday for about three, four years. So I was always in her home, and she was always there, pleasant, strong, quiet, was strong. Mama to me is like the Proverb 31, why very silent, but um, a powerful woman in the spirit. 
she was God's battle ass. She was a woman that demonstrated godly values and character. On her 70th birthday, I had the opportunity to join the family and to pray for her. And one of the things she asked for was for me to pray that it shall be well with her children and her grandchildren. When Deolu was uh, commissioning the house on the rock church in Eleki, Mrs. Adi Farasi was around and she was one of the people in a gentle way, acknowledged me and spoke to me and my wife. She was a gracious lady. God bless her. She was a woman of valor. We will miss her. I wish, would wish her so to rest in peace. Good evening, church. It's often been said that it's not how long we live, but how well. But for a very privileged and blessed few like Mama, they live long and they live well. And once again, if you can, please put your hands together to celebrate a truly illustrious life that it will leave many, trans, many transgenerations of legacy in the hearts of men and women. And to lead us in our service of songs tonight, we'll be taking our next hymn, When Peace like a river. This hymn was written in 1876 by Horatio Spofford and it reminds us that God is with us always. We'll be led by the Integrated Mass Choir and if you will turn to page 7 of the program order in your hands and for those who would like you can also look at the multimedia screens for the wordings of this song of When Peace Like a River. God bless you.
integrated mass choir. You may take up your seats. And now for the next Bible reading, please make welcome grandson to Mama Hilda de Farasin, Mr. Femi Ogundigbe. Welcome him as he comes. Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him those who sleep in Jesus. For this, is, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall pass and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. We will now welcome some tributes uh, for Mama. We would like to remind all speakers that no one is entitled to more than two minutes for the sake of time. Please welcome our first speaker, Mrs. Lillian Adewola. Please put your hands together for, properly as she makes her way to the microphone. Family friend to the Ade Farsins. Please keep clapping till she gets there. Good evening. I thought everybody just seemed so angry at, at work. The pressure was real. And so when I met her, I, I was in awe of her because I'd read so much about her. Uh, my grandmother was part of the about women's riot. So I like to read about women activists. I thought she would be standoffish, but you know, I found her to be warm, humble, kind, a mother. She took my friends and I under her wings. And you know, sometimes she would come to the bank and when I approached her, she would say, Lillian, you were right at the back of the hall and I heard you so loud from out front here. Should a lady speak so loud? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> And, you know, she would say it so kindly and warmly. She was very thoughtful. She, she was never too busy to notice when we were overwhelmed. Many a times I burst into tears when talking with her. And, and then she would say, Lillian, shoulders up, chest out, tummy in, face it. So today, even though I have a sprained ankle, I thought about Mama, and I know she would say to me, Lillian, you must do what you have to do, no matter what it costs you. She was a woman of impeccable character and taste. You know, we used to say amongst ourselves, we are sure she's got some wood in her back. She always sat straight up, and we wondered. She was so elegant, so charming, so gracious so kind the quintessential lady herself you know she 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 had very strong maternal and nurturing attributes but she would by no means tolerate shoddiness she would stare down the whole office she would just stare you down and she says you know at the back of that your form you said and we're like who reads the whole form, not to talk of the back of the form, right? And she would insist that you did the right thing all the time. 
I, I chuckle as I think about her. Mama was full of wisdom, kindness. She, she took us under her wings, strangers, young girls, and she reminded us of the things that were important in life. She always said to me, Lillian, you must speak up. You must always speak the truth and speak up for the truth. And that's who I became, thanks to Mama. We believed she used to deliberately come to the bank just to see how we were faring. She was that caring because she would come at the time when there were not many customers and she came so frequently. It wasn't really about her transactions. She wanted to see how we were doing. Many, many years after that, when I first saw Mama in Guiding Light Assembly, guess what I was watching out for? Let's see, she must slouch now. She's old now. I'm sure she's going to slouch. I watched her through the service. She sat straight up. Wow. So when I went to greet her after the service, I went the other way so that she could see me coming. I wasn't sure if she would recognize me. Many years had passed, right? But she saw me, and I saw she recognized me, and she was smiling. And I was shoulders high, chest out, tummy in. Walking like a lady, not throwing your legs all over the place, you know? And when I walked up to her and hugged her, she said, Wow, Lillian, you're all grown up. And you're practically a lady now. <laughs> it's really my privilege and my honor to celebrate such a wonderful woman. I'm very grateful to have known you, Mama De Farasin. She, she's an embodiment of gracious courtesy, timeless elegance, a combination of dignity, discipline, wisdom, grace, and loving kindness. I celebrate your life, Mrs. Hilda Adifarasin. You were the quintessential lady. You were a gentle yet strong woman of purpose, a rare beautiful flower with petals of steel, if I might say so. <laughs> the sweet fragrance of your life, Mama, endures forever. I love you, and I'm so grateful to have known you. Rest in peace. I appreciate it. Mrs. Lillian Adegbola, as she makes her way down the stairs with her chest up, shoulders back. A quick reminder to all speakers, your time limit will be two minutes. We realize we did not offer a timer for Mrs. Adigbola, so we apologize. But for all other speakers, we will assist you with a timer at the back. If you just look to it, you'll be able to keep to our time limits for the sake of expediting the service. Next, please welcome one of Mama's daughters-in-law, Married to Apostle Yemi Adefarasing. Her name is Pastor Sharon Adefarasing. Mama fondly called her by the name Mayowa. Mama christened her Mayowa. So please put your hands together as you make welcome Pastor Sharon Mayowa Adefarasing. I stand here to talk about my mother in law. Two minutes. And. Um, I don't know how I can do that in two minutes, really. I was going to Nigeria. I was coming into Nigeria from Accra. I am Ghanaian. From Accra to, to do one or two things here with my sister, Vesta, who is here with me. And my friend at that time, Yemi Adifarasin, insisted that I come and stay in his house. So um, we came over to Ogba. And mommy was at the door to welcome me. She gave me such a hug and said, I am so happy you are here. I had never seen the lady before. She was so well, uh, welcoming to us, so warm. She gave us food, loads of food. And what I loved was with every meal, there was dessert. I never forgot that. And her meals were delicious. We had Nigerian jollof. 
and I'm not going to make any remark, but my mother-in-law was the best cook that I ever met. My mom-in-law was the best mother-in-law. She never interfered. I'd known her for 32 years, I believe. Never interfered in our marriage. She was so loving and so welcoming to me and my family. <laughs> Mommy was an amazing woman. Mrs. Adefarasi has said everything. She was so poised, so regal, so gracious. She was like the, to me, she was like a queen when she walked, when she talked. You know, when we got to Lagos, when she spoke to us, my sister and I, when we went into the bedroom, would ask, did you hear what she said? because we could hardly hear her, you know, so we had to train our ears to listen to mommy. Can I get a minute, Pastor Paul? <laughs> Thank you. We had to listen to mommy. I was a foreigner in a strange land and mommy made me feel welcome, really welcome. She welcomed me into the Adifarasi family. I remember on my wedding day when they came from Lagos, she came with about almost a, a plane full of ladies you know, I remember there was Mrs. Young, there was Mrs. Fowler, there was Auntie Bissy, and um, there was one, I forget her name right now, but then, sorry? Mrs. Dowdu, yes. And they all came and they so embraced me. You know, the Adifarasi family, led by mommy, embraced me and my family, and I can never forget mommy for that. She named me Mayowa. The one that brings joy into the family. To mommy, I was joy. And I thank God for her. I was her Ghanaian Iyawu. And I'm going to miss mommy. I'm, I love her. I'm going to miss her. And I thank God that because of her, I am an Adifarasi. Please put your hands together and appreciate Pastor Sharon Mayowa Adefarasin. Allow me to welcome our next speaker who will not ask Pastor Paul for an extra minute, Miss Lydia Boardman, Mama's niece. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lydia Boardman, Mama's niece, as he just said. I have a lot to say about my aunt, but as we say, we've got two minutes. Okay, Lydia, hurry up. Okay, thank you. Our Auntie Hilda. Auntie Hilda was an exceptional lady, which I gladly adored. Auntie Hilda, from the way she walks and the way she sat, Auntie Hilda would never sit crossing her legs. She crosses her ankle. She says that's the way the lady sits upright. Auntie Hilda was very, very soft-spoken. And Auntie Hilda was a proper lady. You, you know, I was quite boisterous when I was young. I used to come up sometimes with, because I used to do what the boys did. I made my dresses torn until they said, what have you done, Lydia? So auntie, um, um, she said, okay, I know what you've been doing, climbing the tree. Anyway, my auntie Lydia, my auntie Hilda, I love very much, was a mother to all of us, all her nieces, all her children. She was a big sister to all her sisters. And all the sisters respected her. They all went to Auntie Hilda and laid Uncle Tunji for advice. Uncle Tunji was the judge of the family. Auntie Hilda was the advisor. She was soft-spoken, very, very soft-spoken. Auntie Hilda, I never heard Auntie Hilda raise her voice, even when she was angry. But the tone, you know she was angry, and you dare not argue. I have a lot to say, but I haven't got time. Auntie, we'll all miss you. You stood by us. And you're the last one to go in that 
Errol, but we'll, we'll pass on the torch to our younger ones. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Auntie, I love you. Please appreciate Ms. Lydia Boardman, Mama's niece, for that very beautiful speech and also reflective etiquette lessons from Mama Ade Farsing. Next, please make welcome the only gentleman in the number, Pastor Lolu Akimumi, as he comes to speak very briefly as well about Mama Hilda Ade Farsing. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I met um, <clears throat> the late Mrs. Adifarasi as a very young executive in Lintas. And um, she was the president of the National Council of Women Society. And um, her deputy was Mrs. Imokwede. And that piece of business was with us. And um, when I was told I was going to manage the business, I assumed it was going to be easy, you know, a piece of cake, essentially meeting two middle-aged women. It wasn't Unilever, it wasn't any of those tough businesses. And I recall the first meeting I had with them. She didn't say much. Then the next meeting, I think I got there a bit late. <laughs> She didn't shout, she didn't raise her voice. The chastisement were, were in those eyes. And I doubt if I ever got to any other meeting late after that. And she was so thorough, if your report was late, it wasn't a good day, if there were errors, if you made promises you didn't fulfill, and all that. So gradually she taught me a whole lot of things. I think I was just about 25 or 26. It taught me to be responsible, to take her seriously. True, it wasn't a Unilever account, but I got to learn a whole lot. Fast forward to a few years later, this auditorium was being built, and I think Pastor Paul invited a few of us, about five of us, and she also was there. We went around, and Pastor Paul tried to explain, this is where this would be. This is all I saw were just bricks and iron and oil and... And she didn't say a word. And by the time we were done with, the, uh, um, with going around, I remember very distinctly she said, hmm, only Paul could have thought of something like this. And in that was packed a whole lot of things about Pastor Paul and his character and determination. Um, I'm so glad I met her. I'm so glad she made an impact on my life as a young man. And once again, I commiserate with the members of the family. Thank you very much. Please appreciate Pastor Lele and all our previous speakers. Listening to the lessons they've learned from Mama, this has almost been a masterclass in decency. Please turn your attention to the multimedia screens as we bring you more to tell you a little bit more about Mama as a mother. We all called her Auntie Hilda, and she was um, a very special woman. Auntie Hilda was a great aunt and mum to all of us. And when I wasn't at my home, she was one of the women who played the role of a mother. When I got married to my first husband, I had to stay with her for three days in our home, and she really treated me like her own daughter. Sergeant. Sergeant Major. Her nickname was Sergeant. Her children used to call her Sarge, like Sergeant. <laughs> she ran her home like a sergeant indeed, even though she was very gentle. She was firm. Very soft-spoken that you would be wrong and surprised if you 
took that soft-spokenness to mean that she was weak. She was strong. Um, she was a disciplinarian to everybody. Anytime we came back from school, if there was work to be done, she would try her best to make sure that we weren't uh, being too rascally, we weren't um, out of uh, her, her, her sight. She, she also was very tolerant. I mean, uh, myself and Pastor Paul, we, we weren't the, the, the most um, gentle of boys. And uh, we, you know, um, were, were lucky to have somebody who could guide us through those difficult times of adolescence. And uh, we've managed to, to uh, not only survive those difficult days, but uh, some of us have become surprisingly um, accomplished in the process. Mommy's Amala Newedu and <laughs> Roly Poly Pudding could not be compared to anything else. I was a beneficiary of her great cooking, and my favorite meal was uh, her granite stew. And uh, I, 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 I can honestly say that I've never since then ever had a better granite stew than Auntie Hilda's granite stew. Auntie could bake a storm. <laughs> She could cook well. And I'm going to put myself into trouble here is, I'm a foodie and she was an incredible cook. <laughs> so I loved eating um, at her house, except on Mondays, because she always made amala and iwidu. And in those days, I did not like amala, so I would avoid their house on Mondays. <laughs> Each time we went to her house, I couldn't wait to go to the kitchen. She had a pantry and there was always either a cake or something she had baked. I remember smelling your food, smelling your cakes. You were either baking, you were cooking, or you would be in the garden looking after your roses. And I'd get out of the car and come to you and you'd say, you know, you have to talk to those flowers if you want them to grow and bloom. Uh, when uh, we were getting married, uh, they played a part as uh, the uh, in the matrons of honor. And not only that, they uh, had their children uh, to, uh, to play a part as uh, in a bridesma uh, bridesmaids, uh, in a, as well as uh, ring bearers. She and her younger sisters were role models. Mr. Justice and Mr. Zadi Farasi were only known as one. And the way his wife endeared herself to us is, is appreciated and admired by my wife and I. Looking at her whole life and um, how she coped, it's a lesson for women in general that you can run a home, even when you're not even from the same place, you can adapt. She adapted completely. You would never know she wasn't a Nigerian. She spoke Yoruba fluently. She managed to keep the home, look after her husband, serve the nation, bring up good children, still look elegant. She combined everything. All her daughters are ladies, well-behaved, very well-mannered. And you can see from all her sons, they're all pastors. It's a privilege to have known her indeed the whole family. Auntie, rest well. Good night. And we wish you journey well. God bless. Mama was truly a formidable woman, and I think we would do well to appreciate her with a thunderous round of applause. Thunderous. Earlier on, one of our speakers, Pastor Sharon, mentioned how she was received by a Mrs. Young, who happened to be mother to our next speaker. Mrs. Margaret Young was uh, mother to their De Farsen boys as well, by proxy. She used to watch over them as much as Mama Hilda De Farsen watched over our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Mr. Femi Young.
Good evening, everybody. It's indeed my great honor today to uh, have been asked to read the eulogy for my dear Auntie Hilda. And so, here we go. I'll start with the early years. Hilda Victoria Joanne Petgrave was born on the 9th of January, 1925, the fourth of eight children born to Mr. Wilford Elijah and Mrs. Maud Petgrave. The son of a Jamaican solicitor, Wilford Petgrave was a mechanical engineer and soldier. Soon after his father's demise, he joined the British West Indian regiments that were sent to Freetown in Sierra Leone to quell an uprising. Once the mission was completed, the British army dispersed and rather than returning to his home in Jamaica, Wilford got a job with the railways and was posted to the Nigeria Railways Corporation, NRC. Her mother, Maud, and her sisters, Edna and Clarice, emigrated to Nigeria from Antigua and Barbuda with their parents, Mr. John William and Mrs. Mary Ambleston. They were a highly respected couple in their community, and as a result, West Indians who were then living and working in Lagos all rallied around and made their home a sort of a center spot for the community. One of these people was Mr. Wilford Petgrave. During one of his visits, Wilford met, courted, and eventually married their beautiful daughter, Maud. Wilford and Maud were blessed with eight children, Reginald, Winifred, Godfrey, Hilda, Evelyn, Madeline, Millicent, and Joyce. Hilda received her primary education at Mrs. Wilson's Kindergarten and secondary education at CMS Girls Grammar School, after which she went on to the Prince of Wales School in Accra, Ghana, which later became Achimota College. Because she was such a methodical and organized person, her father encouraged her to embark on a secretarial course, after which she worked as an officer in the Savings Accounts Department at the Post and Telecommunications, PNT, the Lagos branch, which, while she was doing that, she simultaneously was attending the midwife training school at the Massey Street Dispensary in Lagos. As a trained midwife, she moved to the United Kingdom, and in 1951, became a state registered nurse, SRN, at the Nottingham General Hospital, after which she returned to Nigeria. And then in 1964, after having had all of her children, Hilda went back to the United Kingdom and attained a diploma in hospital administration and a certification in family planning from the prestigious Royal College of Nursing in Edinburgh, Scotland. When she returned, she was employed as the administrative sister of the General Outpatient and Casualty Department at the General Hospital in Lagos, where she remained until she voluntarily resigned due to health matters in 1968. In 1960, though, Hilda was a founding member of the se and secretary of the Professional Association of Trained Nurses of Nigeria, PATMON, and later joined the National Council of Women's Societies, NCWS, as a representative of nurses. After resigning from active duty at the General Hospital, she focused on the professional activities of the NCWS, and in 1971, she was elected as the Council's treasurer, a position she held for nine years. In 1984, Mrs. Hilda Adifarasi was elected as the president of the National Council of Women's Society, a position she held for four years. D during her tenure, she helped to build an association of women with diverse professional interests, creating awareness for the merited recognition of women in national life and by extension, nation building. She promoted the NCWS and expanded programs on immunization and created operating theaters for young girls with vesicovaginal vistula, VVF. Joseph Adetunji Adefarasi was Hilda's older brother's 
older brother Godfrey's friend, and they attended Igbubi College together. Along with other friends from Igbubi College, they congregated in and around the Petgrave home. Later on, when Tindri went to England to further his studies, he met Hilda's older sister, Winifred. And one day, while visiting, his sister, while visiting her sister, Winifred, Hilda and Tunji met and a loving relationship developed. After a year's courtship in 1950, Tunji proposed to Hilda and she accepted. On the 15th of November in 1951, Tunji and Hilda were married at Christ Church Cathedral in Marina, Lagos. And this marriage was blessed with five lovely children, namely Joseph Adiwali, Maureen Adibola, Elizabeth Adeyinka, Michael Adeyemi, Paul Adeyol. With the benefit of hindsight, I think it's fair to surmise that Hilda de Francis' acclaim certainly includes her prominence as a humanitarian, an advocate of women, a public servant, and a national hero. Hilda was affectionately nicknamed Tuku, which means daddy's pet, by her grandmother, Sarge by her children, Auntie Hilda by her numerous nephews and nieces, Grandma by her grandchildren, and to those who ran her, her household, Mummy, and to many others, and her protege, Mama. She was indeed a woman who embraced life with the spirit of a warrior and graceful poise as a prince, of a princess. Nothing could deter her nor break her. In every facet of life, she proved to be prayerful, bold, and a dogged achiever. Truly, this Amazon, Hilda Victoria Joanne Adifarasi, epitomizes the Proverbs 31 virtuous woman. <laughs> May her gracious soul rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Femi Young. We have heard how Mama de Farasi turned out many ladies who stood straight with their chest out and ankles crossed. But many people may not know of her role as a nation builder. If you pay attention to the screens and the hall in front of you, you will find out how. What I can recall about her is her large heart. I've always found her to be so elegant, so dignified. You feel belonging whenever you see her. She carried herself with grace and dignity. Mrs. Hilda was the national president of National Council of Women's from 1984 to 1988. The National Council of Women is the highest body organization of women all over the world. Those were the days when the council had the body of the Nigerian woman or the Nigerian girl child. She worked hard to see that Nigerian women belong somewhere. She left her well-paid job, the nursing profession, to serve women of Nigeria. She fought for the rights of women. She showed the whole world that you can be a mother and a wife, but you can also have an impact in the country, in whatever role that has been chosen for you. And she was very much involved also with the Red Cross. She was able to clearly demonstrate that a woman could be so many things at the same time without shortchanging any of those her duties and responsibilities as a woman. She was committed to this country 100%, but from the 
point of what women could do and what could be done for women in terms of nation building and all that. She was the one that got the Bangida to start a Ministry of Women's Affairs. And because of what she was doing as president of NCWS, and the Bangida was so impressed when he met um, Mommy, and then said to her that I would start a Ministry of Women's Affairs. The first lady, the Dr. Mrs. Miriam Babangida, made sure Mommy Ade Farasi was always with her. Mommy Ade Farasi is one of the pioneers of Better Life program for rural women. Before her time, most people didn't know much about the uh, vesicle vagina fistula. She was the one that actually, you know, uh, brought to the fore. And with support from both the World Bank and WHO, that became a major issue. And I think it led extensively to Cotillina Menace in, in, in the North, in this country. On her leadership as president of the NCWS, she also started something on immunization on a large scale. And um, if more women are active in our society today, in politics, in the professions and all, I believe a lot of thanks must go to people like, like her. She was my mentor. Sometimes, even as politician, I restrained myself. Because that background, that beginning, that foundation of NCWS is a disciplined organization that teaches you what to do and what not to do, and you can resist any operation. Today, that is not how we can enter the office in Lagos and cannot remember Mama Ade Farans. Hilda. We would miss you. You were a woman. She was an epitome of womanhood. Um, an embodiment of what woman, a Nigerian woman, stands for. Let us quickly acknowledge all the various ministries that Mama was involved in with a round of applause. National Council of Women Society, the NCWS, the Nigerian Red Cross, and the Gideons. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome the Executive Coordinator of the House on the Rock, Pastor Kola Oladumoye. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to House on the Rock. I greet the families that are there for our sins. Mama certainly lived a great life. Just listening to all those testimonies, I can only say, what a legacy. What a legacy. May our lives be so well lived that such can be said when we live. In furtherance of the service, in 1741, while Judge Frederick Handel wrote what remains to this day, one of the greatest choruses of all times. He claims he saw a vision of the great God himself seated on his throne with his company of angels. Drawing inspiration from the book of Revelation, he penned down the music and lyrics of a song that would reverberate through time. Today, Mama Hilda de Farasi walks in the vision Handel saw and has tasted of the hope of our salvation. Let us rise now as the choir sings that timeless song, the Hallelujah Chorus. Thank you.
appreciate the integrated mass choir. And you may take up your seats. From the wisdom nuggets we've heard from our various speakers that they glean from Mama, we can tell a lot about her life. But one of the things that is the greatest testament to the life she lived were the children she left behind. Allow me to introduce her last child and possibly one of those who kept her praying through several nights. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Metropolitan Senior Pastor of House on the Rock, Paul Ade Farrison. Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our royal fathers, my older siblings and precious segments, and your spouses. Thank you for your condolences to the family. Over the last several weeks, we have been able to bear the great loss. Because we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know that death is never cessation, it's only separation. The shoe on my foot animates because it has a living foot inside of it. Our mother's body will be buried tomorrow, but she could never be buried. She's an eternal soul with an eternal spirit that from the day she believed upon Christ, she was seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of all divine authority. And so your consolation and condolences make us truly glad. We feel the loss terribly, but we know we'll see her again. With the permission of our Dawodu, the head of our family, uh, Pastor Wale, a worthy leader, it falls to me to introduce the speaker this evening. He's a very learned man. He's a phenomenon as a speaker. And no better voice on this particular day at this time to lend his understanding to the passing of a dear and precious soul to glory, to frame the import of legacy, a torch that is to be shared with another generation and passed from generation to generation. This man who will speak the homily in honor of Christ in her life is the senior pastor of Christ Temple and founder of the International Central Gospel Church headquartered in Accra, Ghana. As a preacher, his delivery of the word is directed at practical Christianity, human dignity and excellence. No wonder he is the founder and chancellor of Ghana's first independent private university. The Central University College in Accra, Ghana. He's married very happily and enduringly, enjoyably to Lady Joy Otabo, and they are blessed with four amazing children. Will you rise to your feet, if you kindly will, and receive his very noble presence, the Reverend Dr. Mensa Otabo, as he comes all the way from Accra, rises to his feet to deliver the homily. Please bless him as he comes. Let me see it. And to the bereaved family, our deepest condolences uh, once again. Uh, losing your mother at any age is quite a life changing experience. And we pray the comfort of the Holy Spirit on you and your children, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren to the distinguished uh, traditional rulers here and to the excellencies represented here and to the members of the clergy who have come to show uh, solidarity and comfort for the Adiferesin family. May the Lord help us in this moment to reflect deeply on who he is 
and what our faith stands for in moments like these. A lot has been said about Mrs. Adefarisin, the senior, uh, because there are quite a few at Mrs. Adefarisins, but the senior one. Um, and uh, so much uh, that has been said would put us all in awe of what she represented and accomplished in her life. But I suppose the most important thing that we can say about her is that she was a Christian and she was a child of God because the tributes end here on earth. But what happens beyond has nothing to do with any tribute we give, but how God receives her. And, and so we honor her for her Christian faith, for her commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, for her enduring faith, and as we have been reminded for the persistent prayer of some particular individuals. Uh, and thank God her prayers, like those of uh, St. Monica of old, uh, who prayed for her son Augustine, uh, to return from his wayward ways and later became St. Augustine. Uh, Mrs. Ade uh, probably would be St. Hilda also uh, for uh, the enormous prayer and burden she carried for uh, the salvation of her children. And may the Lord reward her labor and may the Lord honor her faith, not only in this moment, but in the generations after her. This morning, I, uh, this evening, I want to share briefly on our Christian hope. Why should we as Christians see death in the face and rejoice? What makes us so confident that death is not the end of our existence. Our hope as Christians is grounded on the resurrection. And the resurrection of Christ is the foundation of Christianity. Outside of it, we have a form of religion, but no power. But in the resurrection is the reality of our faith and the trust that we have in God. And so I'm going to share four things which I believe represent our hope as Christians and, and what we hope for, what we look forward to. Of course, when we look at life, there are various experiences we go through in life that remind us of death and life after death. The first easy one we can remember is sleep. Every evening, we go to bed and we sleep and have no awareness of what goes on and we have no awareness that we are even asleep. And then at a certain point, we wake up. So that is a figure of death and resurrection that God reminds us every day that there is sleep and there is a waking from sleep. And then we look at birth. Uh, a child is conceived and stays in the womb and has no concept of life beyond the womb. And uh, if you ask the child whether there is a life of, of, of human beings, tall, clothed, microphones, cars, aeroplanes, they would have no concept because in the womb everybody is naked. No clothing, no microphone, no table, no bed, nothing. And yet, one day, they get out from that world and come into this world, which is totally different from the world they have emerged from. And that's a second reminder that God gives us every time, that there is life beyond this existence. And if we came from our mother's womb into this world, we surely will leave this womb into another world after we die. So what is the hope of the Christian? Where, where do we rest our conviction? 
The Christian hope is built first on a new life, on a new life, our resurrection. Because as Christians, we know that beyond death, there is resurrection. And Jesus Christ demonstrated it and enacted it by himself through his death and resurrection. He said to Mary and to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The Apostle Paul further states in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up in his power. The Bible clearly states that the resurrection of Jesus was not limited only to him, but is spread to everyone who believes in him. So there is resurrection. And the Bible states clearly that that day will come. There will be a resurrection. So for a Christian who died, as the early Christians believed very deeply, uh, and were able to face lions and, and beheadings and flaying of their skin, they were very assured that the pain of today was not the end of their lives, that as Christ resurrected, so will they resurrect. We have a promise of a resurrected life and a new life in Christ. But that's not all of the Christian hope. The Christian hope is also the hope of a new body, a resurrected body, a glorified body. This is a very unique hope unique to Christians and grounded in Christ Jesus. When Jesus Christ resurrected, he had a different body from the one he had died in. The earlier body was worn out, the new body was glorified. And the uniqueness of this promise is that most religions believe in some form of, re uh, of resurrection and uh, some form of coming back. Some believe that uh, when people die, they will come back as ghosts. Others believe that when people die, they will come back, they will be reborn as new babies. And in most African cultural beliefs, they, uh, they would say that their grandfather has been born or a father has been born. Uh, their sense of resurrection is that you will be reborn into this world. And there are others who still believe that there is life after death, but you will come back as a monkey or a lizard. Uh, but Christianity holds a very unique view of resurrection, that when you are resurrected, you have a new body, and that new body is not the same body you have on right now. It is called a glorified body. It is similar to the body that Jesus Christ had, and that body has power in it. It is raised in glory. It is raised in power. It is a spiritual body and can walk through walls, can levitate, can overcome gravity, can ascend, and can be at two different places at the same time. The resurrected body of Jesus Christ could do that. So would you one day as a Christian not only have a new life, but in addition to the new life, have a new body that has immense capacities that we cannot imagine today. It is not subject to deterioration. It is glorified. And a glorified body has no sickness in it. Every sickness is healed. All infirmities are restored. The blind eyes will be restored. Limbs that were cut off will grow back in a resurrected body. Body parts that were lost in this life are all replaced. The resurrected body is a complete body outfitted for the resurrected life. <clears throat> so we're not only promised a life, but a new body. And this resurrected body is God's promise to every Christian. And that is why we can be assured as Christians that when we leave this life with its pain and its weaknesses, we don't carry this into the new life we have in Christ Jesus. 
all tears will be wiped away every pain is left behind every sickness is left behind and we have new bodies in Christ Jesus the third promise that we have as Christians we have a promise of a new life we have promise of new bodies and we can be very sure that our mother today has inherited all these promises because although we think we are going to say goodbye to her the day she shut her eyes to this world it was open to the kingdom of God eternally she's already with the Lord we are only remembering her works after her but her life is now in God we have a new life a new body and we have a new home the resurrected life and the resurrected body of the believer does not live in this world it lives in a new home in glory and this home is a home that Christ says he's preparing for us the world is our home now with all its problems with all his difficulties, one moment, something happens to disrupt us like COVID. Another moment, we're not sure how a war is going to end, but there is coming a new world. And this new world is where our new bodies will live with a new life that we have in Christ Jesus. Some people call it heaven. Others call it the kingdom of God. Others call it the new Jerusalem. No matter what you call it, Jesus called it my father's house. And he says that is where those who are resurrected in him will go. And the Christian must be confident in this hope. And that is why we can be at a funeral service and still rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Because we have hope in Christ Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to my side, to myself, that where I am there you may be also. Heaven truly is wherever Jesus is. Uh, wherever he is is heaven and and uh, no matter how you envisage it to be the most important thing is it is where Jesus is and that is where the life of the believer is our life is in Christ it begins in Christ and it continues in Christ in Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 to 4 John the revelator says now i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away also there was no more sea then i john saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband and i heard a loud voice from heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. The concept of heaven is found in most religions. In most religions, uh, the concept of heaven is a place of sensual and physical pleasure is a place of intense physical pleasure but the hope of the Christian in heaven is not a world of physical pleasure is a world in God's presence because what makes heaven so real to believers is not how much pleasure we're going to have but how much of God's presence we will experience because the passage clearly says the tabernacle of God is with us to be in the presence of God at all times. Heaven is a place that is suited for our glorified bodies. It is a place governed by God directly. Isn't that an amazing thought to you Nigerians? 
that there is a place that God is the president. <laughs> and it's a good thought for Ghanaians too. That there is a place that God is the president and he's the cabinet and he's the parliament and he rules over everything. It is a place whose ecology is sustained by God's light and there's no need for electricity. And that place is currently the abode of God and his heavenly angels. But one day it is going to be the abode of the resurrected believer in his glorified body who will live in this world. That is our hope as Christians. And that is why we can live with expectation, not only in this life, but also in that which is to come. And the final thing about the hope of the believer is our new mission. Why do we have to be resurrected, have new bodies, live in a new world? To do what? Our new mission to reign with Christ. On earth we work. We work for companies, we work for societies, sometimes we get hired, sometimes we get fired. On earth we work, sometimes we make profits, sometimes we make losses. But in the new world, we reign with Christ. We are co-regents with Christ Jesus. Of course, for most of us when we were children, the concept of heaven uh, as we saw in children's Bible, picture Bible books, was that of uh, fluffy clouds, very effeminate angels, sprouting some very tiny wings, and playing a harp. And, uh, and, and, and just contemplating eternity in such a state is not quite an appetizing thought. And I don't really believe that heaven is what has been captured artistically uh, for us. Revelation 22 verse 3 to 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp or light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The operative word is reign. Not exist, but reign. Reigning is an activity. It's an activity of rulership. It's activity of exercising jurisdiction. And whom do we reign over? Because Satan would have been conquered, cast into the lake of fire, so there will be no Satan to boss over or for us to bind and cast out. But there will be work to do. You cannot live in eternity playing harps. Eternity must be engaged in something very stupendous. And I have no clue because the Bible doesn't tell us how we will reign, but just thinking of the expanse of the universe, and of late I've just been impressed just reading about the expanse of the universe and the creation of God and magnificence of the creation of God and the galaxies and all of that. Why did God create such an expansive universe? I suppose that one day he plans that some people will reign in territories, in jurisdictions, in this new heaven. When we reign with Christ, superintending his glory, his power, his majesty over the entirety of the universe that our Lord God has created. And we will be partakers of the reign of Christ over the creation of God. So today, as we contemplate... All that God has done for us and what our hope is. 
we remind ourselves with what the Apostle John says to us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. If we hold this Christian faith, then we must live for the one who gave us the hope and the one who gave us this new life for Jesus Christ to keep ourselves pure, to love him, to serve him, to honor him so that when we depart this life, apart from brilliant tributes that will be narrated about us, we can have a firm assurance that we didn't just and the praise of God, of men, but we end a place in the resurrection, in the glorified life, in the new world, and to be reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ. And may all of us who have this hope in us keep this hope alive. And it is this same hope that our mother has had in Christ. And that is why today, in the, in the midst of all the tears and the pain, we rejoice in what she has found, a resting place in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'm sure we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Thank you, sir. To lead us into the attestation, our next guest is a senior pastor of the Fountain Gate Chapel in Bolgatanga. He is also the president of the East Uranaba Ministries, in, also in Bolgatanga, in Ghana. Please make welcome Pastor Eastwood Anaba. Praise the Lord. Um, this is a, a kind of territory I'm not too familiar with. And because it's, it's normally a very painful time, especially when it's a family like this. And then um, the family gave me a very difficult job. Pastor Paul called me and used a word I haven't used since I was in secondary school, attestation. <laughs> and it's a very big word. I had to open the dictionary. <laughs> well, what is attestation? <laughs> I almost felt like they were taking me to court because lawyers talk about attestation. But um, attestation of the life of Mama Hilda. Mama Hilda Adifarasin. A woman of faith, I can attest that her faith in Christ was unquestionable. That she fought the good fight of faith, even in illness and suffering. And I will shelve that and come back to it in a minute. I will also attest that she framed the world of godliness around her. By the many things she did, many things she was, many things she talked about, and many things she thought. I will also attest that I am sure that right now she has found her place in the presence of God with the triumphant church in heaven. And on the final day, we shall see her on the other side of eternity. But I will go back to the fact that she fought the good fight of faith. I've listened carefully to almost everything we talked about here. The fact that she was a mentor, the fact that she was a great woman. She did many things, the kind of family she raised. 
But I want to remind us of um, something that may have escaped us a bit. And that is to attest to the fact that she handled suffering well. She handled suffering and pain well. I saw a bit of that when I will visit her and we'll sit in the sofa. And she will show me the things she's going through on her body, herself. The, the, the pain as you are growing. We are looking at Pastor Paul. We are looking at a house on the rock. We are looking at Pastor Wally. We are seeing Guiding Light Assembly. We are looking at Pastor Michael and the great things. We are looking at Bola and the great things. Yemi and the great things. I love that. But the greatest thing about this woman is how she managed all the pain around her. I remember Job's wife looked at pain and told Job, he said, curse God and die. There are many people that are fit, but when suffering comes, they drop the pain. They drop the feet, but not Mama Hilda. Mama Hilda at the Pharisee in the face of pain and suffering, maintained her feet and kept fighting to the very end. Suffering, suffering. I want to testify about a woman who handles suffering without disgracing God. She went through pain and did not debit God's account. She went through pain, but did not credit the devil's account. It was not about the devil. It wasn't about God. It was about she herself as a soldier fighting with the grace of God. And in the midst of all of that, trying to keep the whole family together. We salute a saint. We salute a saint. We salute a saint. Though I was not there on the day she passed to glory, I can almost be sure that on that day she saw angels coming for her. Because we've been told that some, when they are just about to pass, will see darkness, dark abyss. They will see hell open. And they will see the forces of darkness coming for them. And they say they are coming, they are coming. But those that know their God and do exploits, they see the heaven open like Stephen. I believe that mama saw the heaven open. I believe that just as Jesus said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Mama said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. She gave us an example. We will all fight to the end. Suffering, we will not give up. Shame, and we will not give up. Pain, and we will continue to the end until the heavens are open. Mama Hilda left a legacy. And at this point, I want to transition into the prayer for the legacy of our late mother. And that one is an easier one to do because we have all said she was a mother. And if she was a mother, then she left behind seed. And if she was a mentor, she also left behind seed. As long as you leave behind seed, even when you pass into glory, your seed will continue the legacy. And today we have a formidable lineup. This lineup can deal with Argentina, they can deal with Brazil, they can deal with the Super Eagles, they can deal with the Ghana Black Stars. This lineup, look at them all in blue, though they are not Chelsea. This lineup, this lineup, boy, this lineup. This lineup can deal with any legacy. And they will take it to another level. I am always almost sure that just as Solomon took the legacy of David to another level, these boys and girls and, and, and little ones will take it to another level. We are talking about a woman, a midwife, career nurse, 
medical administrator, nation builder. Somebody said, how do you know all this? Pastor Paul lectured me. <laughs> they will take it to another level. And so I want us to pray for the legacy of this woman, that it will not be obliterated. Her memory will stay with us forever. I nearly spoke in other tongues. And I remember that here is a mixed crowd. Nevertheless, shall we pray. Blastinimi ikabasaya. Shadros nimi santimiha. Gabarian dimisine. Anybody who can pray in the spirit, do it in just 30 seconds. Manos minisifiaka. The churches our mother went to. They prayed in other tongues. Come on, pray in the spirit. It's just 20 seconds. Bano sini mihi kaba. Sabrastu ni mini ya kabase. Yambadua ni misanka maha. Lifeles kemo santi mihanda. Kabali nde mesini ni misaya. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the legacy of our mother. The legacy Mama Hilda at the Pharisee left behind. She was a mother. She was a mentor. And she had seed. Let the seed continue with this legacy. And take the legacy to the next level. As there are days, so let their strength be. That the people that know their, do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Let a little one become a thousand and a small one become a strong nation. Your holy name is glorified concerning a vision, a dream, a woman's, women's activist whose works will not perish, a midwife whose works will not perish, a nurse whose works will not perish, a mother and a mentor whose works will abide forever as long as the earth remains and in eternity a great reward following your name is glorified in jesus name amen <clears throat> thank you very much pastor eastwood may i now welcome to the podium Dr. Abu Bako, the chief servant over Lagos, Lagos Rima Foundation for Leadership Resource and Development in Accra, Ghana, to take a prayer for the surrogacy of Mama. Thank you very much, and thank you for the privilege to pray for all the surrogates. From my little understanding, a surrogate is one that acts in place of another. That's why a surrogate mother is somebody who is carrying somebody else's child. So I'm just going to make it simple by looking at John 14 verse 12. That's the prayer I want to pray. And I don't know many people that have had the privilege of touching lives like Mama Hilda. Um, I have been in ministry for a very short while. It's just about 54 years. But this is the first place I've been where those that are coming to testify include heads of states, former head of state, and others like that. So it's important, and with due respect to everybody, I'm going to ask us to stand especially for the surrogates, those that are going to carry on her work, because verily I say unto you, of course, if you consider yourself a surrogate, you're welcome. I believe it's okay, isn't it? You're welcome to stand. He says, He that believes in me, 
the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. Mama has gone to the Father. Yes, it was about Jesus, but it's because of the Jesus in her that she was able to accomplish all. And as many as have Christ here, today God will enable you to multiply the works that she did. That's the prayer I'm praying. Lord, behold the surrogates. Let the works that your daughter did be multiplied through these ones. That it will no longer be just a tribute to her, the works that are past, but the works that are ahead through these ones. From today, we declare that in terms of family life, there will be multiplication of impact on families through these surrogates. In terms of ability to be thought leaders because they have transformed mindsets, these ones will be testimonies of a transformed woman that had the mind of Christ. Wherever they go from today, I bless you with the mind of Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare from today, everywhere you go, you're going to go as somebody that has self-governance and will be able to build the nation even better than Mama Hilda did. Be a nation builder wherever you go. Be a people builder wherever you go in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare also from today that wherever you go, you will be an educator that will be able to see the potential in every man, every woman you come in contact with and bring out the best from them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare from today, wherever you go, you will have the ability to understand how things work Work, how life itself works and how relationships work and you will be a multiplier of the grace the anointing to relate the way God only can operate in you to operate that way in the name of the Lord Jesus and I declare also from today that wherever you go you will be one who is a maker and a doer that will show the works of God at levels people have never seen before that which no eye has seen no ear heard no has entered into the heart of man that God prepared for those that love him be released into your life from today and go forth as people that will be proclaiming the word of God the works of God by the light of the good works that people will see in and through your life go forth in this your might and be one that will bring the culture of heaven wherever you enter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our perfect example, the first begotten from the dead, the firstborn of all creation. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Baku. And for the last prayer for Mama in this segment, prayer for the, her descendants, it gives me great joy to invite the senior pastor of KICC International, Pastor Matthew. Ashimolo. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. I believe, as a Yoruba man, that many times when the head of a family passes on. It is very important for us to build a wall of prayer around those whom they leave behind. It is so easy to rally when our fathers or our mothers pass. Then things come that tend to want to divide, to break the unity, to make us fragment and go separate ways. My focus, my prayer is going to be that the idea for us in family will go from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from blessing to blessing, 
and as our Baba and Mama Adi Farsi have left a heritage, I never met Mama, but I met Baba Adi Farsi several times for some reason. We'll always meet on KLM uh, <laughs> Lounge before flying together, and he was a man of faith. You could see that this is a couple whom God brought together to raise a family that would touch the world. But it is not enough. We need to pray for unity. We need to pray that the baton handed to these great men and women will go on for generations. Amen. We're going to pray that the unity will be stronger and nothing will separate. Sometimes those who come into the family adopting the name breaks families. That will not happen. Amen. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence today. Today we thank you for the testimony of our mother. We thank you for what you've done. And so today as a servant of Jesus Christ, I pray for the idea of our sins, the sons, the daughters, the grandchildren, grandsons, granddaughters, the great grandchildren, the, the, the siblings, and then the spouses. I also pray for the ones yet to come. First of all, I pray for long life. A mama lived 98 years. That is a testimony. I pray the same anointing to rest on every of the sons and daughters in Jesus' name. A mother was a woman of unity who brought people together, women who brought men together. I pray for the idea of Pharisee family, that incredible um, anointing of unity will rest on this house. We see a commitment to God in her life in her children. Today, I pray for every Adifara thing, the ones who are here, the ones yet to come, that their commitment to God will be unchallengeable. You will do awesome things in their life. I pray for the men, I pray for the women, as they pass the baton to their children, their children will serve the Lord. One more time, I pray that the bond of love, the bond of peace, the bond of unity in the Adifara Singh family, will become even stronger, will become better, will become greater. And every time we hear of them, it will be of testimony. It will be for greatness. It will be for advancement. Anything that divides will not come into their midst. And that declare and decree into their life today, sometimes in some places when a person passes on, then there are all kinds of announcements of deaths and deaths and deaths. Not in this house. Only good news testimonies. Next time we gather with the idea of Pharisees, it will be for celebration, for rejoicing, dedications, blessing things to the glory of your name, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ashimolo. We'd like to quickly acknowledge various ministers of God who have come out to share this moment with the pet graves, the Ade Farrisons, the Ade Forwork Graves. Please acknowledge them with a round of applause very quickly as we call them. Please put your hands together for Dr. Mensa Otabo, founder, International Central Gospel Church, and Chancellor, Central University College. Please appreciate Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, founder, Kingsway International Christian Center. Please put your hands together for Pastor Eastwood Anaba, President Eastwood and other ministries. Please put your hands together for Dr. Abu Bako, Chief Servant of the Logos Rima Foundation. Join us and acknowledge Dr. Humphrey Arumaka, President Bishop, Word Base Assembly. Please also acknowledge Bishop John Praise, Dominion Chapel International Church. Please acknowledge Pastor Fifi Penisel from the House of Worship from Maryland, United States of America. Also with us, acknowledge Reverend Dr. Mercy Ezekiel, General Overseer, Christian Pentecostal Vision. We would also like to acknowledge Pastor Sam Okoro, who is the Deputy General Overseer from the Guide and Light Assembly. Please acknowledge Bishop Dick Esando, Action Chapel International. Please put your hands together for him. Join me and acknowledge 
Pastor Ademola Ademushan from the Guiding Light Assembly as well. Also here with us, and please do not get tired of appreciating as we acknowledge Bishop Curtis Fianu from the Church of God Mission. We also would like to acknowledge Bishop Feb Idahosa, the senior pastor of the Church of God Mission. We're glad to have Bishop Jonas Katung from the Maranatha Covenant Ministries International. Also with us, Archbishop John Osaoni from the Vineyard Christian Ministries. Please join us and appreciate Pastor Femi Emanuel from Living Springs Chapel International. Join us and appreciate Reverend Victor and Jumake Adeyemi from the Global Harvest International Church. Please make welcome as well Ms. Pastor Femi Paul, Senior Pastor, Grace Assembly, Lagos. Also acknowledge Pastor Femi Obayewa the, from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Promised Land. Please also acknowledge here with us Dr. Tunde Jodha from Christ Chapel International. We appreciate all the ministers of God who've taken out time to be here and also all the ministries that have taken time to commiserate with the families of the Adifar Sings, the Petgraves, and the Adifar Pays. Please put your hands together for all the ministries again. Now, as we gradually wind down for the evening, to help us take the announcements, the acknowledgements, and the vote of gratitude. It gives me immense joy to invite the head of the Adefarasin family, my pastor, the general overseer of Guiding Light Assembled, the ever smiling, gentle, amiable Pastor Wale Adefarasin. Keep it going, please. Keep it going. Thank you. Keep it going. Thank you. We of the Adi Farrison family are overwhelmed by your support, your words of comfort and condolence. And we truly want to acknowledge everyone that is here for having been a strong arm to lean on over the last few weeks. We've acknowledged the members of the clergy, God bless you and thank you for, for coming. I'd like to acknowledge His Excellency General Yakub Bugawan. And Auntie Vicky, Mrs. Victoria Gowan. We called him Uncle Jack. Thank you so very much. We'd like to acknowledge the First Lady of Lagos State, Dr. Ibijoke Songwoyu. Thank you, Your Excellency, for coming. We'd also like to acknowledge the former First Lady of Lagos State, Her Excellency Senator Oluremi Tinubu. Thank you so much for coming. Her Excellency, Mrs. Toyin Ojara Saraki, we were very grateful 
for your presence, for all your words of encouragement and support. Honorable Obina Chidoka, Federal House of Representatives from Idimili North and South, we'd like to acknowledge your presence here as well. Otumba Shubomi Balogun. It's a relation of us, the Otumba Tungashe of Ijebuland, with his wife, Olori Omoba of Ijebuland. We acknowledge you, the Asiwaju of Ijebuland. Thank you so much, sir, for, you know, my father always had very kind words to say about you whenever he spoke of you to us. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Chief Brown Mene, who is, I, I, I believe your title is the Prime Minister of the Wari Kingdom. was a personal friend to both my father and my mother. Not just a friend, but a brother, a brother in Christ to them. Thank you so much for always being there for us. I mean, even if we don't see you physically, we know you're praying for us, as you always have done. I also want to acknowledge here Alabo Professor Emeritus Dagogo and Alabo Ta. Please don't forgive me for murdering your names if I have. And Dr. Deaconess Vinolia, Vinolia Fubara, wherever you are. Thank you very much for coming and, and being a support to us. We call her Sisi Abba, Mama Abba Folawiyo. Again, she's a relation of, a, of ours, a precious relation. We also want to acknowledge Lady Maiden Ibru. Always there for us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Mr. Oba Tudeko, we're grateful for your coming today. Thank you so much. And another relation, Yeye Olori Ladun Shijwade. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. I'd also like to announce for, for us that as the service gradually comes to an end, um, we have the funeral service tomorrow. It's at Guiding Light Assembly in Parkview Estate Ikoi and will start at 11 prompt and we request that the guests be seated by 10.30 in the morning. For our recessional hymn, the clergy will recede first followed by members of the family. And we ask that you kindly stay seated um, until, that has, until they have left. And then we have a reception after this uh, service. Um, it's a short reception, stand-up reception in the foyer of the church. Please um, join us. Now, I can't go back to my seat without asking if Uncle Jack will give a few words um, to just uh, summarize the occasion for him.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm asked to sum up this great occasion. Because there are greater people here who know there are differences, especially Ma Hilda a differences. But uh, thank you all thank you all our great fathers in the Lord thank you all for all the eminent people that are here my old friend and brother Watumba uh, Balogun and did I see I, uh, my goodness, nice to see you, but all of you, great things have been said about Ma Mama Hilda, but one thing that I would never forget was the support she gave my wife and I on our way uh, to being husband and wife. Herself. Herself and her sister-in-law, Dorothy Adefope, were matron, were matron of, uh, uh, at our wedding, matron of honor at our wedding. And I can assure you, it's not only the support they gave us, the advice they, they gave us, but they also involve all their children to be part of that journey uh, to our life. Yes, I remembered a number of the boys and, uh, the boys and girls. They were either bridesmaids or page boys or uh, ring bearers. And uh, they all worked so hard. They trained them in a well. They trained them well to really partake, you know, of that ceremony so dutifully. And they did very, very well as bridesmaids, flower girls, or, you know, as something page boys, or, well, some of the bigger ones were there, but they are, the support is, you know, is there. But uh, the youngest, I think, boy at the time, uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm told that your mother called you Diolu. Am I right? <laughs> Diolu. <laughs> Diolu, popular as Diolu, but we know him as Paul. Not St. Paul. Not St. Paul. <laughs> Not St. Paul yet at that time. <laughs> yes. And uh, they trained them well to partake to play their part well, and they did exceptionally well. And I remember particularly uh, the uh, page boy or the ring bearer. Uh, he was uh, supposed to carry the ring to make sure that the ring was really presented, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, on the right occasion, on the right occasion, and. Uh, my daughter sent me a clip. Somebody, I think, showed uh, him, the young man, holding in famine those rings so dutifully. He was a great young soldier, <laughs> very, protecting those rings and making sure that at, at, at least uh, they were presented, they were g given at the right time. And I can show you the work of those young people, the support they gave us, as their parents also gave us, uh, the support they gave us, and the ring that they gave us. Uh, those things really has held us together. My wife, Victoria, and I held us together for 54 years now. 
34 years now. My thanks and gratitude to each and every one of them and to all those who have really uh, supported the Adeforasin family. And the occasion today certainly has been a great one, a glorious one. And I must congratulate you all for the support you've given and to all the excellent choir that uh, you know, we have. I think everyone has done well to see Mama uh, Hilda on her way to receive her crown of glory for the good work that she has done here on earth to all of us, not only the family, the community, and of course, the Christian faith around and also all the community, Christian, Muslim, believers and non-believers. She had done well and certainly she has gone home to the Lord and I'm sure she will receive her, uh, her grand, uh, crown of glory. So we wish her well and thank you all for everything. And to the family, yes, accept that yes, we're going to see her, that yes, you will see her physically no more. But as I think we've been told, yes, she will be there and we will all meet her uh, you know, one day before the Lord. Thank you, thank you, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for General Yakubu and Mrs. Victoria Gowan. He's actually done the bulk of my job for you, for, for me, which is to express on behalf of the family our profound gratitude to you for all you have done, all that you are doing, and for taking the time out to come here today. I want to deviate a little and, and express gratitude to some people who have worked behind the scenes, the choirs of our churches. The ushers of our churches. Our video, audio, audiovisual teams. I have seen over the last few weeks a great collaboration between all the departments of our churches. We had no senior partner, but everybody brought their own expertise and their experience. And I think that we have demonstrated to the body of Christ that collaboration is possible. So thank you all very much for your time, for all your your support, for your love, for your prayers, we are indeed deeply grateful. God bless you all. Gordon, you can do a lot better than that. Appreciate Pastor Wally Adifarsen. Also join me and acknowledge the presence of Bishop Oscar and Pastor Mrs. Ugochi Osai. Please put your hands together for them from the City of Refuge here in Lagos. Also a 
appreciate the presence of Pastor Dotun Ojelabi. We'd like to appreciate all the friends that have made time out to be here and the loved ones, the captains of industry, the doyans, the leaders of business and thought, the numerous, too numerous to mention. We see you. We do appreciate you. On behalf of the pet graves, the Ade Fire Saints and the Ade Workways, we would say a very big thank you to you for making our time from your busy schedules to be here today. Please put your hands together for them and appreciate them on our behalf. Thank you so much. And now, please turn your attention to the multimedia screens for our last video playout for you. My condolences to the entire Ada Ferrison family as we commemorate the life, the legacy, the love of Lady Hilda Victoria Joanne Ada Ferrison. We could wax quite verbose in our conversation about her impact. Nigeria has lost a matriarch, but you have lost a mother and a grandmother and a grand lady. But she's not really gone, my friends. Somewhere appearing over the balconies of heaven, she's perched with class and grace, joining the host of witnesses that are cheering us on. And may her voice be heard in your heart and in your head as you run the race that is set before you. She will always be the wind beneath your wings. She was a graceful lady admired by many people, not given to too much talk. A virtuous woman with impeccable character, whose purity was tangible as well as transferable. Soft-spoken, gentle, kind, but very principled and very firm and very strong. I called her in my own way, soft power and steel water. God made her beautiful from the inside and on the outside. And this showed very much in her courage and character. We were very fortunate and very lucky to have a woman like Hilda Adifaras in Nigeria. And we are thankful for what she did and all she stood for. She was a nurse and she contributed immensely to the growth and development of nursing profession in Nigeria. Mrs. Ade Farase was also an activist, a woman leader, and her impact was greatly felt. Ever lively, ever joyful. Her spiritual disposition endeared me to her. And it was such an awesome thing to watch her life as she began to age. I know I had to be someone who supported that husband 100%. She was kind, she was generous, she was faithful. I can testify to that. Good mom, a good wife, a good grandma, took the children, was very protective of them. I'm particularly impressed by the impact of our life and that of our husband over their children. The result is there for all to see. From the children, you can see that she was a good mother, a disciplinarian, somebody who in the society is described as an exemplary woman that people should emulate. We are talking about the life of a mother a mentor and a matriarch, we will certainly miss this virtuous woman, this woman of vision, and this woman with a formidable voice. I believe that her legacy will continue throughout many generations. I'm not saying goodbye because I know by the resurrection morning, we will see you in your glorious body. And by there, we too will be there in our own glorious bodies. My Hilda lived a long life of service, not only to her, uh, to her family and community, but also to the nation at large. We will miss her, but 
will never forget her. Her contribution will reverberate for generations to come. Salutations, greetings, commendations. Give the lady a hand. She's well worth it. Go on and celebrate a great life. Go on, you can celebrate properly. This is what they did in heaven when she came home. It was a rousing round of applause to one that had made it, that had run her race, completed her course, and was ready to receive her crown. You may take up your seats. Just before we share the benediction, a quick announcement. All guests with cards should please exit through the central aisle while we'll ask all other guests to please exit through the side doors. Once again, all guests with cards, please exit through the central aisle while all other guests exit through the side doors. In a moment, we'll move on to our benediction and then after the benediction, we would like to take advantage of this rare opportunity as you know, the Ade Farasim family, the Peck Graves, Ade Folk Bay, are huge families with very busy, successful sires and children. It is rare to have them all in one hall or building at the same time. So we would like to take the opportunity to get a big photo, a family photo, and then a few additional photos. So before the recessional hymn, we would like to make that photo happen. Also, when it's time for the recessional hymn, the clergy will exit first and be followed by the family. We would ask that you please give them a moment to situate themselves outside before you make your way to go on and greet them. Once more, all family, invited guests, and those with cards will please make their way through the central aisle while all other guests please make your way through the side doors. And to lead us into the benediction, it is my pleasure to invite Bishop Dick Essandor, the Bishop in Charge of Governmental Affairs at the Action Chapel International, Accra, Ghana, representing the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Well, praise the Lord. Let me begin by just, uh, on behalf of the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, extend once again uh, his commiserations and condolences. Uh, as I sat there, one of the precious uh, women of God turned to me and said, are you an Adi Farrison? <laughs> and I said, no. But I've been fortunate enough to have the very first person who pastored me and sowed the seeds of Christian discipleship in my life was none other than Pastor Paul Adi Farrison himself. And over the course of several decades of ministry, I have had one that I've called a big brother, a mentor, an example. I love his passion for kingdom excellence. And he's just stood with me throughout those times. And that is Pastor Michael Adi Farrison. Pasiemi. So to the question, are you an Adi Farrison? I think under the mentorship of these two great instruments, something of the Addis Farrison must have rubbed off me. So God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for prayer as we bring this service to a close. In 1 Samuel chapter number 20 and verse 18, Jonathan said to David, He said, Tomorrow is a new moon, and you shall be missed, because your seat will be empty. Today, Mama Hilda's seat is empty. 
and yet incredibly she has not left a vacuum because of the investment she's made in so many people and everything that I have heard today just so resonates with all that the Archbishop has been saying about her in the last few days leading up to this so we pray that her legacy will continue and every investment of her efforts will continue to grow in your life let us pray you are the immortal the invisible God the God that inhabits eternity your word declares that you are the God of all flesh and the God of all spirits to you shall men come father we thank you for the tenor of the life of your handmaiden we thank you for the Lordship of Jesus Christ who is the conduit and the bridge between time and the freehold of eternal life we thank you for all that you have done in and through her we thank you for the living testimony that she has been we thank you for all that she has produced Lord we know that this is a life that was lived well we commit everyone here unto your grace we pray that the grace of God that brings salvation shall continue to preserve everyone here under the sound of my voice I bless you with the spirit of longevity may your years be like the years of many generations may the counsel of the Lord be established in your life I declare you will not go before your time you will run your race you will finish your course I call for an open heaven over you that even as we leave this place tonight we commit you to the canopies of God's covering the Lord watch over you the Lord preserve your going and your coming the Lord make you a testimony may you become an epistle of all that is written of Yeshua HaMashiach and now may the blessing of the Lord be with you the Lord fortify your walls the Lord become a refuge in times of trouble the Lord watch over you with jealousy may the blessing of the Lord rain upon your life the Lord cause you to go from strength to strength I declare that no evil shall come now your habitation neither shall any evil occurrence happen unto you may our ears hear good news concerning you may your life be crowned with blessings of the Lord as you live today may the Lord cover your journeys secure your going out and your coming in we commit all those that came in from different nations unto the Lord we declare that may the highways and the byways and the airways be sprinkled by the blood of Jesus that as you came to be a blessing you will live here a blessing we thank God for your lives we thank God that you'll be a testimony we thank God that all that mama Hilda has left the example that she was shall pass from generation to generation may every blessing that was due her on earth that did not manifest in her long life let it pass to her children and her children's children and her children's children's children in the name of Jesus the son of the living God and everyone shall say Amen. let us share the grace together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore look somebody and tell them that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen and amen God bless you in Jesus name please remain in the hall and remain seated if you will unless of course if you have to make a very quick exit I would like to invite the biological children and their spouses first to please join us in, on the altar. I'd like the grandchildren to get ready. I'm going to place you in front of your parents shortly. So biological, biological children and spouses. All right. Please make your way up. I'm going to, let me ask the dignitaries present to please join the, um, 
picture with the family members before they make their exit. If the First Lady of Lagos State, Her Excellency Dr. Ibijoke Sonolu, would join the photo. If His Excellency General Yakubu Gawan would please join the photo. If Her Excellency Senator Mrs. Olurami Tinubu would please join the photo. I'd also like to ask Otumba Shubomi Balogo, the Shuadra of Ijabo Christians, to please join the photo. I'd like to ask Oba, Mr. Oba Otudeko to please join the photo. I'm going to invite a few more people shortly. I'd like to ask the children to please be in place so we can make the photo happen quickly so I can bring in the next set of guests. It's a very big photo. Have I invited Dr. Obao Tudeko CFR to join the photo? I will invite a few more people after this, after this set. So if we could all look to the gentleman in the black v-neck shirt, the central aisle, so we can get this photograph. I will invite a few more people shortly, but there isn't a lot of space, so... I'd like to ask Mama Abba for Olawiya to please join this photo. Mama Lady Made in Hebrew to please join the photo. If I could squeeze in. Dr. Mrs. Toya Jarasaki to please join the photo. I had actually called you, Your Excellency. I had called you first. <laughs> Apologies, madam. I saw earlier, if I could have him squeeze in to the right or left, Mr. Shago Agbaje and Mr. Aige Mokwede. Daming, if you could... Okay. Are you happy, Dami? All our elder statesmen and our dignitaries may be excused. We don't want to keep you standing for too long. We will allow you to walk right past our... We'll allow you to walk past the central aisle to the reception. I'd like to quickly acknowledge the former Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Mr. Steve Orsay. I would like to ask him to please sneak into the photo if he can. Thank you.
if I could just quickly relocate our First Lady and put her beside the leader of the Adifarasim family, Pastor Wale, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. If we could have everyone looking at the cameras once again, big smiles, photos last forever. Thank you. I will ask the photographers to give a brief moment if you would allow for our dignitaries, our elder statesmen and women to please take up their seats or if they choose to make their way to the reception they will be ushered in by our, our protocol department while we allow for a few more photos and I thank those of you who are waiting as well we appreciate you Let's just give a moment to allow the elder statement our dignitaries our public office holders to please make their way to the reception while I invite the extended family of the Ade Farisons, the Petgraves, the Ade Fogbes, the Boardmans, the Ogundikbes, the Ayegbonams, and any other extended family that I have failed to mention. Protocol, if you would assist us to make sure our dignitaries are taken care of. Protocol. All right. Um, if we would all take our seats, I will let me bring this to a swift close. I'm aware that there's another event tomorrow. So we'll bring this to a close. We have another event tomorrow. I'd like to invite back the integrated mass choir. Please remember the order of recession. We will allow the clergy to exit first. After the clergy has made their exit, then we will allow the family to exit. We are not there yet, so please don't make your way out of the hall. We will take the recessional hymn together. If the integrated mass choir would lead us. We'd like all our guests, family members, children, to please take up your seats. All our dignitaries and elder statesmen and family members, if you would please take up your seats. We're about to take our recessional hymn. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have time for the festivities and the exchange of pleasantries at the reception. I'd like everyone to please take their seats, please. We want to take our recessional hymn. The service is only over after the recessional hymn. We would like everyone to please go back to your seats. Thank you. Please make your way to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Please make your way back to your seats. We'd like to take our recessional hymn. The service is not over. 
the service is not over. We'll take our recessional hymn. Please make way for the clergy. Please make way for the clergy. We'd like all our guests, all our guests to please make their way to their seats. We want to take the recessional hymn. Please. All our guests, please make your way to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're about to take our recessional hymn. Remember that we will allow the families to exit after the pastors.